Think this podcast, Greg, recording from the crib today. It's a special episode. We got uh, the international homie Jay in the building. Uh, I'm sure. What's up? I know most of y'all know him as uh, at Shanghai Soul, but we're doing a special episode today. Uh, he's not able to call in on Wednesdays uh, like we had before, so I, I'm not gonna give this an episode number. I was gonna give it like episode what 76, but I was figuring like this is episode. We'll call might, this. Yeah. You might have to put like an asterisk by 76. Yeah, I might have to do something like that, <laughs> add, add some to it. Pickups? No, yeah, you go first, bro. I have zero pickups. I might not have any pickups for a while. Um, nothing I is... Feel like, I feel like after you came back from your hiatus, you kind of changed a bit. Like, <laughs> I, I did. I can't, I can't really tell like <laughs> what your buying, your buying philosophy is anymore. I don't, I don't honestly know. And somebody else said that. Shout out to the homie Big Raj. He had sent me a message, and we we're talking about the uh, the thirty twos. And he said, "I know it took like the picture of the lows. I don't know what it was." And I said, eh, "I don't know yet." And he said that I'm I, I become hard to please the possibility of um, off white, but I, I mean I'm just not I'm not going to start at so high. Like my mindset, right. my mindset is I know I have to, I'm going to have to, but in my mind, I'm like, man, I, I hope I could get retail, you know, which I know is far, but right. everything that I like, I don't know why I feel like I have it or I don't know. I'm not, I don't know, man. I know. I totally know what you mean <laughs> because like, uh, like when I was back in the States, like I would walk into the mall and I walk into like all the the box stores right the big stores like Foot Locker, champs finish line i literally could finish looking in those stores in five minutes like all three of them because i walk in because i already know what i'm looking right. for and i already know what they have and a lot of that gr stuff like i maybe i'm spoiled now but a lot of that gr stuff i'm just not into it like i yeah i don't i don't want it you know like it's just sitting there i don't want it i'm like oh nope nope done and then and then my wife will be like you finish that really fast. She's like, I thought you would come out with like bags and bags of shoes. And I'm like, nope. Like, it's, I know what I'm looking for and I know that they won't have it. So that's it. I mean, you know, it's funny. Like, I'll go to the mall. I won't even go in there. I won't even go in the stores. Like, we were, uh, me and my wife and my family were out shopping yesterday and we were right there, Nike Scottsdale. I mean, it was right there across the street. I didn't even go inside. Like, I didn't feel like there was going to be anything in there that blew my mind. And I feel like if there's anything that is in there, I'm, I can get it off eBay yep. or Kicks yeah. deals or something much, you know, anytime I want. Like, I, yeah, it's true. and I mean, I guess, you know, I, I just, I'm not going to put forth the effort to like, retail just sounds crazy nowadays, to be honest with you. Retail just sounds crazy for a GR. I know. So, uh, but nah, yeah, I don't know why. Nothing really. I've been looking at a lot of classic Reeboks and stuff. Like, there's a lot of stuff I'm looking at online, and there's like some stuff that I want to pick up. But right now, I'm just kind of like, you know what? You just don't have to. Like, I don't have to. Even things that I see that are affordable, you know what? I'd rather just keep the money. It's not. It's not that serious, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I hear what, you. I seen what you picked up already. Uh, <laughs> you couldn't contain yourself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so what did, what did Jay pick up? Uh, all right, so uh, I picked up a play a pair of uh, black toe ones. Okay, it's like my double up. So I'm gonna keep those on. You I'm got a good price on, on ice for a while. Um, it's not great. I mean, like it's not it's not ridiculous. <laughs> right, it's not ridiculous, but it wasn't it wasn't great. It was above retail, that's for sure. Well, anything like that. I mean, to me, if it's past. Like two seventy to me for some Jordan ones. I that's retail to me. I don't even. Oh, I know, right? Yeah, like that's. I mean, you, you look at the Chicago's. I just saw a thing on StockX that that notified me. It said the lowest ask was four ninety five. Oh, for Chicago's. Yep. I remember Chicago's kind of sat a little bit. 
Uh, Chicago a man. few years ago. Yep. Yeah, the 2015 ones, right? Yeah, yeah. those are 4.95 right now. It's crazy. That's insane. I've turned down pairs uh, of those. Yeah, I picked up a, a pair of Yeezy creams for my brother-in-law. So I was back in uh, San Francisco for uh, my sister's wedding, and uh, his uh, wedding gift was a pair of creams. <laughs> What'd you get her? I gave her straight cash. Oh, <laughs> you, you didn't get them. You didn't get them. His and hers. No, man. I mean, my sister is like, she's really into vans lately. Like the last time I was back in the States, she was just rocking vans all day. So they live in San Francisco so, uh, too? Yeah, they live in San Francisco. It's one of the best cities in the world. It's crazy, man. But it was so hot, bro. It really? was 108 degrees. In San Francisco? Yes. It was like a heat wave. It was insane, man. My shirt was like see through by the end of the night. I mean, today here was like 108. I go to San Francisco to get away from stuff like that. Oh, I picked up the uh, Flyknit AJ ones too. Oh, okay, you already got them. Yeah, because they came out uh, September 1st in in Asia. And they sat there. Uh, one store sold out, but they're getting a, a restock soon. And then the other store, it's still it's still sitting. Was it like any other Jordan one, like? people raffled or anything like that no it's first first come first serve like with people in line or anything or was it like you just walk in um you can just walk in oh really oh okay yeah but but it, it's weird though because like i said like one store sold out and one store didn't so it's kind of like i don't know i don't know what people's mentality on them are but they're they're more expensive out here man they're selling for 200 oh, okay see well on the nike app it had it at 200 and then now it's down to like 180 or 190 or something. Yeah, so, but I guess after tax, you're looking at the same price, though. Yeah, I'm interested to see what happens. You know it's going to sell out on Sneakers app. It's going to sell it on there, and it would just be sitting around stores in Arizona. Yeah. I feel like yeah. it will. So I, I just hope that they don't start – I don't know how to explain it. I just hope that they don't start just throwing mad colorways with it. You know? Like, yeah. I don't want it to become – like the next jordan i know it won't be the next jordan one where they'll just use every single classic colorway on it but i mean they've already released what the royals like you saw the royal colorway right and they have that the gray with the gum bottoms the gray ones are okay i think those are all right they're all right i don't know well like yeah like you said they they can go anywhere with this they might come out with like patterns who knows like yeah, I'm worried they're gonna start making like a hyperfuse <laughs> Jordan One, a you know. I know it's like I just feel like I don't know. It's it's original, but it's unoriginal at the same time. I know I feel like it's a little late, and then I just feel like it's unnecessary. Like wasn't nobody asking for it? You know, right? Um, we're not looking for a lighter. It's like is it lighter? Like does it feel different? Uh, I mean it's it just feels like a it just feels like a sock. Really? Thought, but the, the the sock liner is really comfortable though, oh, so okay. that's why I, that's why I like it is because it like where your ankle is it's it's like padded really well there, so it feels different than a regular Jordan One. Okay, I mean I think it should be more comfortable. I think Jordan Ones are uncomfortable to me now. Like I just wear them because they're just dope, but they're not that comfortable. They're for flat footed people, so. Yeah, well, I got I got probably the flattest feet you'll ever see. So I, I have pretty flat feet pretty... too, but they hurt. <laughs> all right, it's like wearing like a yeah after... a, a dunk all day. Yeah, after a while, like you can't wear it for more. You can't wear it like walking around. You just wear it to stunt for a little bit. That's facts. So, but uh, yeah, I mean, my last pickup is the uh, I picked up the uh, off white Jordan One man. My last pickup, like <laughs> well, you know, I just picked up an off white. Uh, so how uh, how did that how did that happen? Uh, my my buddy my buddy um. Wait wait wait! wait. For, uh, Don't tell me you got for retail. Uh, I I'd rather not say what what I got it for. Okay, but is it more than retail? No. What? Aye <laughs> aye. <laughs> well, people are gonna be hitting hey, you man. up. I'm sure people no. already hit you up. No. Uh, it's it's kind of stupid. People, I mean, when people hit me up, I'm just like, I mean, it says in my profile, I'm not a reseller, and I think that if you follow my page, like you can, you know that I'm not a reseller. Like right. I never sell anything on my page. Everything everything I post is either like stuff that I see in stores in Asia or stuff that I own. So, uh, I mean, and, and and I'll tag like whoever I take a photo of because I'll like walk around and I'll see students like 
rocking dope stuff and i'll like take photos of like what they're what they're wearing and stuff but i'm i don't sell shoes like i and even when i did it was just like small stuff here and there but uh yeah man so uh my my buddy hooked me up man i i I hooked him up a couple times um like throughout the years and then (laughs) i asked him i was like is there is there any chance for that pair and he was like oh we'll see what i can do and then the next thing i know i get a message from his coworker asking for my address and i was like oh okay i don't know what pair this is and then it showed up on my doorstep and i was and i opened it and i was like you've got to be kidding they did, did they have any other ones or did they only have the jordan ones just the jordan ones yeah do you and know it, how- and it's it's did- special too because it's uh because they're the china it's it's like the it's as if they were sold in China because all the shoes that come sold in China have like a like an authenticity card that says like from the Nike store from from Nike. Oh, really? And so like it's not it's not a pair from the States. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. I didn't know they went different routes like that. Like I didn't know they did it extra like that. Yeah. They just add like a card saying like this is this is the product from Nike. Well, that's cool, man. I'm glad you got a pair, man. I mean, you're the first person that I know personally with a pair. I'm sure there's a I mean, few people lurking that I know, and they're not going to say anything yet, you know, because <laughs> I know I know there's people here locally that already probably have a pair, and they're not going to say anything yet because they know once they put it out there that they have it, they're going to get hit up left and right. Yeah, so I guess I guess it's good that I guess it's good that uh, uh, I live so far away, so no one can reach me. <laughs> That's crazy. Did anybody hit you up today? Uh, yeah, like three or four people sent me like a like a personal message asking like, "Hey, like where can I get them? I'll I'll pay you." And I was like, "Oh, sorry." I'll pay you. So. <laughs> yes, thank you. If you think I'm about to go through the work trying to get those again, you will pay me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man. I mean, they're they're so they are. So real quick, Jay actually came up with the topics today, which is actually dope, and I appreciate that. So I'll probably touch on sneaker companies going high-end collaborators. You know, we obviously had the Supreme Louis Vuitton, and then we have obviously Off-White and Nike. Talk about that, see if it goes anywhere else. Jordan sitting. I know we've touched on that a few times on this podcast, and I'm sure you've heard a bunch of other people on Instagram and lives and whatever else talk about Jordan sitting. Uh, I know we've talked about it before. But, you know, we get Jay's perspective. We'll also talk about SneakerCon uh, Hong Kong. Since Jay was actually lucky enough to be able to go there, since that's on his side of the world, give us a rundown on that. Oh, we're doing top 10 point guards to us. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, my list doesn't mean that they were better than anybody else in that in my era. It just means that's who I liked. Now this is just means who I liked and who I thought was a quality point guard and was underrated. Yep. Uh do we say anything else we were touching on? Uh no, I think that's it. I think that's um, pretty but, much oh, it. Oh, I, I want I want to ask you real quick. Uh I'm glad you finally checked your freaking mail, man. You got that shirt. Oh yeah, you. I did get that shirt. That shirt is dope Yo, too. I, Yo, I'm glad you like it, but I was like, I was like, man, what is taking Greg so long in checking his mail? Well, it never went into the mailbox. Like, it it came to the door. So, um, I got it. Man, I can't even think. I don't even remember, but I had got it a couple days before. Um, I had actually posted it on the thing because. They when they deliver stuff to our door, we have this bench. I mean, I don't want to tell anybody where they they <laughs> they they place it somewhere, and it's not like plain sight. So I got you. We have to periodically in our head say like, "Oh, let's just go check this area to see right. if there's anything in there." So uh, we did that, and it was there. So and it was super dope. It's it is crazy. The size difference in shirts. Oh, right. Because because when you posted that photo, because when I bought it, I was like, I was really nervous. I was like, hmm, because I wear an XL in Asia, but in the states, I'm like a medium. Yeah, me too. And so yeah, right. So when I was asking you, I was like, are you more on the L size or like the 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 medium side? And then when you were like medium, I was like, all right, bet I'm gonna go XL because when you wash it, that that sh- that joint will shrink a little bit too. So yeah. so I went XL just in case, just to be safe. I actually did laundry today, and you know I took it out, you know shook it out, hang it up, and I put it on today, 
and it was a little more snug. Yeah. Like it was fine. <laughs> and at the bottom of it, it kind of like uh like shrunk in. I don't know how to what you oh, call like it. Tape, it like tapered a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it like kind of tapered a bit, but uh, it still fits perfect. Like it's still dope. So All right, bet. Um but so, yeah, I mean, uh that's a cool that's a cool shirt though. I thought I I was like, man, I want to pick up something like Asia, Shanghai related. I know, and, I, and I'm like, you know, oh, you, and I said to myself, I was like, you know, I'm going to check our our Nike see if we got an Arizona uh, Arizona specific one and I went there yesterday and like I said earlier I didn't even go inside because I was going to send you <laughs> I was going to send you another shirt but I was like nah I was like the shirt that you sent was so dope I was like nah I'm not going to just send you know what I told you I was going to send I'm going to send something better than that so but uh so I know that they I know that they have um that they have uh like region specific ones because I think I saw one in New York and I think I saw one in LA yeah and they all do yeah, and then I know that like Taipei has one too, and so I was like, "Oh, these are pretty cool." It's just when it comes to Arizona, you just never know. Like, <laughs> you never know. It's either we don't get something, or when we do get it, it's the wackest shirt possible. Like, if there's an Arizona shirt, like it's probably whack. Or our Nike Scottsdale. I mean, I, I love our Nike Scottsdale. You know, it's it's ours. But when it's like, hey, we're gonna get the db4s but we only got 16 pairs and it's about oh. it's about 250 people out, outside in line and it's like come on man like give us at least 50 you know hey man i remember i told you you remember when i told you about that cause they yeah. had 40 pairs i told you 950 people lined up and that's insane and and it, if off-white <laughs> drops the same way off-white release is going to be the exact same way so i heard that i heard that there were only like 10 pairs in new york yeah, the uh, at least online, it's like I've seen 10 pairs of Vapor Max, and I think I've seen 10 pairs of another model, you know. You know what's kind of funny, though? I don't really see a lot of people talking about the Air Max 90, and I think that one is fire. All right. Yeah, that one's pretty sick. That one is super dope. Actually, you know what? Let's go Hong Kong. Let's talk Hong Kong first. Sneaker Con. All right, Sneaker Con? Yeah, So let's do um, it. you went to, uh, you, uh, we'll call it Sneaker Con when it's really Kais Con. Uh, <laughs> you were able to go. Uh, I said a lot of people actually from the states actually attend, and they were obviously YouTubers and store owners and things like that. Uh, from the pictures and video and stuff I seen, it really didn't look that. I don't want to use the word exciting, but it didn't look as crazy as the other ones look. I could be wrong. Um, now when you sent that picture of the line outside, that looked kind of crazy. Well, I mean, that was right when that was right when um, it opened. So oh, I got really? there at noon. Well, let me start from the beginning. So right. I, over the summer, like in was it like June, like early July, end of June, like I was like on Instagram, and then Sneaker Con posted a photo said we're coming to Asia, and I was like, oh, what? And obviously, if it was like coming to Asia, I was going to try to make it, and it just so happens that it was in Hong Kong, which is only a two-hour flight. So I was like, oh, bet I'm I'm there for sure. And so um, I brought uh, my brother-in-law with me, and so we both went down together. How was it? And then that line, uh, that line was right when it opened. And so, yeah, I mean, it was there were quite a lot of people because uh, Hong Kong, like whether people know this or not, is like a huge sneaker like city. Like right. people, people are crazy about their sneakers there. And so uh, it was, it was all right, man. Like. It was it was everything I expected and then not what I expected at the same time because I feel like uh, the venue was pretty big. It was in like a convention convention center. It looked too um, big. I don't know if it was too big or if there weren't enough tables to make it look empty. Do you know what I mean? Oh, like, okay. Right, because there weren't that many tables. Like there was probably, I don't know, like 20, like 30, 30 tables. Really? That's it? Are you sure about that? Yeah, yeah, man. I'm not kidding. Maybe 30 like thirty tables. Thirty tables, and 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 I would say, and all the tables were like sneaker stores, right? Right. Like sneaker stores, like boutique shops. Oh, really? Mom and pop, mom and pop stores that brought a lot of their inventory out there, but a lot of it was to stunt, not to sell. So it got a, it got a lot of. Uh... 
so they had a ton of heat. I mean, they had like Adidas 4Ds, the 3Ds, like foams, the Tianjings. They had a couple of pairs of off-whites. They had some mags there. They had some hyper adapts there. Like there were a lot of tables that were showing off what they had, but they weren't really selling that many shoes. So, so these that, were were these like consignment shops? Or no, no, they were like their own. These are like they're not consignment shops. They're more like just stores that have a lot of heat. Well, so then future crafts aren't fly. <laughs> they they just have future crafts and mags. Yeah, but they weren't selling them. It's more like their own. Oh, store. oh, okay. You see what I'm saying? Oh, okay, okay. So like, so like they brought them out there to show people. Like I know That's you saw, back. I know you saw that uh that one IG I sent it to you with like all like the Grail dumps, yeah. right? But like they weren't selling them. You know what I mean? That's whack. That's so, a, that so to that's me why is I like was, classic. That's why I was kind of that's why I was kind of disappointed because there there wasn't that much buying at least from what I saw. Like there wasn't that much buying going on. But yeah, I mean like a lot of people were admiring. Don't get me wrong. Like I I mean I had my phone out the entire time like taking pictures of of everything I saw. I was like right. holy crap, they got future crafts, they got mags. But I mean no one no one was buying any, any of those pairs. I it, yeah, from what I can tell, like, okay, when SneakerCon was out here, it might have been, I think, maybe, I, maybe about 80 to 100 tables, if that. I'm not sure. That's a, that's a lot, man. It doesn't, I might be going over. It might be like 50 or something like that. I'm not sure. Um, and they were surprised at how well it did out here. I think probably a lot of people out there, is that the first time it's been there? Yeah, it's the first time in okay. Asia. So it's so probably it's- like they're everyone just wants to go see what it's all about you know right right right, right. I, did you buy anything at all or my brother-in-law picked up a pair of uh infrared sixes from the trading pit but nothing from the tables i was looking at some <laughs> uh i was looking at some kobe's like i wanted the grinches they didn't have my size and i was looking at a pair of the beethoven's um but what but are prices have... like out there that's pricey man like, like a grinch six out here like was it ds or no, uh, yes, it was DS, and man, it was like a thousand dollars. So, like a thousand US or a thousand, a thousand US. Oh, yeah, that's way too high. And then, uh, so a pair of like, uh, oh, I was looking at some like Ultra Cream, uh, Ultra Boost creams, the chalks, and they were going for about nine hundred dollars, which is way too expensive. You buy pre owned shoes? Yes, I do. Oh, hmm. I'll, I'll buy pre owned, but it's got to be like. It's got to be, like, pretty good because I'm kind of, like, OCD about that kind of stuff. <laughs> See, I – when it comes to pre-owned, I don't even think – I mean, you know, obviously we used to look for, like, the, the very near DS. Very, 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 very near DS. You know, all that nonsense. Right, right, right. But yeah. I just feel like, you know, if I find – I mean, like I said, I buy a lot of vintage stuff, so it's already beat. <laughs> Like, oh, I yes. don't even I'd... know. I'm not even sure if it's necessarily always beat by the person who owned it. It might just be old, you know. Right. Uh, right and I clean right. them joints up and I'm cool with it. You know, it's one of those things where we're at a stage where we have so many sneakers nowadays where it's perfectly fine to walk around with a pair of beat up something, you know. <laughs> like Oh, man. Like like Jordan 1s now, people prefer, prefer them like beat in, man. Yeah. I think on my bread ones, I've kind of ran those through the ground i don't even wipe them off anymore like i just leave them the way they are uh vans you know obviously vans are always look good beat up and they're too impossible yep. to keep clean anyways yeah same, uh, with that, same with chuck's same with chuck taylor's too it's like oh, that vulcanized yeah. rub that rubber is too hard to clean Nah, if you don't have like one of them like erasers nah yeah you're not even bothering with it so what was the so how was it i know how it is out here as far as kais and youtubers and things like that do people oh, man. do people care about that over there? He had the longest line. Okay, Kais, Kais, I mean, Kais's, Kais's, Kais's merch. Right. He had the he had the longest line in the entire place. Because the thing about Hong Kong is that like it's it's pretty international. So uh, like people, it's not like in China where you don't have access to like where the where the person the common person doesn't have access to like YouTube and Facebook and Gmail and stuff like in Hong Kong, it's all accessible. So uh, like everyone that was there, like knew that Kais was going to be there. Oh, okay. So, I, so I, he I, had a huge line for his merchandise. Um, 
uh, Tony D was out there, but he wasn't at the venue when I was there. But I had hit him up on Instagram because we went out the night before. Right. And I and I and I hit him up and I was like, "Yo, do you wanna do you wanna come out?" And then he was like, "Oh, where are you guys at?" And then it got late and I was like, "All right, I'm going home." Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, I yeah, it was it was crazy, man. His line was ridiculously long the See, entire time. I sometimes wonder if. It's just the entire setup that crep builds that attracts the people because their their entire booth and area is like an entire wall. And I don't know how it was out there, but it looks like the place where you're supposed to go. They have the they usually have those uh, sneaker con posters or, or backdrops to where you take the picture out They take the picture. Yep. That's usually yep, yep. by their booth. You know, yeah, Kais so like, is right, by the booth. Walk- it's mm-hmm, just a mm-hmm. big, gaudy display, and I'm like, it just looks like you just gotta walk straight there. That's where you're supposed to go. Yeah. Right when you walk in, right when you walk in, Crep and uh, Kais's booth were right to the right hand side, so you couldn't not see them. You know what I'm saying? Right. And and a lot of people, at least like here in Asia, it's like, I call it like lemming mentality. Like they won't like there might be there might have been people who didn't know who he was, but they saw people wanting to get a photo with him. And they were like, oh, shit, I got to go get a photo with that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's what it was. I mean, there's actually a picture that me and Ryan took with him a long time. And Ryan knew who he was. I didn't know who he was. And uh, and this was like we had done maybe one or two episodes of the podcast before. And he was like, let's take a picture. Let's go talk to Kais. So I was like, I had no idea who he was. So, uh, I mean, I saw, like, some of the videos they posted. I thought it was, I don't know. I don't understand how they feel that that's entertainment for everyone that attended and paid money to attend to watch Kais play an NBA legend at horse. Yo, that was, man. So, like, I actually didn't stick around to watch that. Like, I saw a little bit of it. And right. I was like, all right, like, this is, this is kind of dumb. Like, I don't like anyone else, right? If Ray Allen played with like a kid, even if he played with an adult, right? like a local, like a local person. I, I, I mean, actually he did have, he did have some kids like shooting around on the court with him, which is cool. Right. But then when like the main event was him playing horse with Kais, I was like, nah, I'm out. Like that like, was I, actually I, like a a set time like at this time he's going to interview Ray Allen at this time he's going to do this at this time he's going to play him in a horse like if it would have been like you know throwing a raffle ticket or the lucky person gets to play against Ray Allen in horse that'd be okay I just don't understand yeah cool. I don't understand why that was the like everybody gather around like they think Kais is like a a, a, a legend at basketball now or something so what was per- yeah exactly and what was perfect is that my brother-in-law didn't really know who Kais was right and and he was next to me and I was kind of like standing on the side kind of like mumbling under my breath and then my brother-in-law comes up next to me and he's like who is that guy and I was like oh he's a you know really famous sneaker YouTuber and he's like why is he playing with Ray Allen and I was like <laughs> you, and I, and I was like you took the words right out of my mouth like. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know why he's playing with Ray Allen. That's a good question. It. That's a good question for everybody. But what, but, but what was cool is that so Ray Allen came into the building and it was like a stampede, man. It was a running of the bulls. Like everywhere he went, people were just circling around him. And so what, what was cool is that a lot of people had some Ray Allen PEs out. And uh, he would go around and he was signing them and taking photos with them. So a lot of the booths... Had, a lot of the tables had Ray Allen PEs out, and they oh, were taking tight. photos. Yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. He seems kind of weird. Like, it, just I, growing up watching him, he always kind of seemed like a little awkward a little bit. He's a, he's a little bit of a loner, I think. Yeah, a little, I, I feel like a scene like that would be too much for him. Yeah, I mean, he, I mean, he, I mean, he was going around and stuff. He, I, I know he's a really intellectual guy, though. Oh but, yeah, uh, he he definitely seems like he's a bit of a loner. I mean, it's funny, right? Because like KG Pierce and Rondo and them have all cut him out. Like that was a big deal last I know. year. That's right? crazy. They were all like, understand. "Oh man, you let you left us without saying anything. We're out." Corny. Yeah. Um, um, but uh, yeah, man, Shanghai. I mean, but oh man, the the hype the hype is in full effect, bro. It uh, was ninety. It was like ninety plus degrees. It was hot. It was hot that day. And people were rolling up in that new box sweater LV Supreme. Yeah. 
there there were probably like 15 cats wearing that joint in like 90 degree weather and to and you knew it was just like man i'm gonna wear this no matter what i don't care what i don't care what kind of weather it is but i'm gonna stunt in my lv stuff and how people many, were just how many yeah. you think were fake maybe half <laughs> Really? Okay. Like, yeah. I mean, I expected it, and I didn't see as many pictures as I thought I would of people wearing, like, Bape from head to toe and um, Supreme from head to toe. Like, I didn't see as much as that as I thought. Um, there were obviously I mean, some I, that you said. It was so funny because I, I took some photos of, of those three guys that were all decked out in off-white and Supreme. And then um, my brother-in-law went up to them. I was taking photos, and then they were posing, like – but they didn't know that we were going to roast them on IG later. <laughs> Don't cast it too much. Uh, it was too much, man. And then uh, there was, I mean, there were people wearing like the purple pair, the Bape NMDs, the purple pair on the left, the purple one on the left foot and the green one on the right foot. Like a lot of people were doing that kind of stuff. And I figured that. I mean, that's... I, I, that's everywhere though, right? Like, that's you'll see everywhere. everywhere. And I, I hate that. <laughs> I really... I really do hate that because I know why they do it. And it's sort of like, it's like to let you know, like, oh, I, I also have the green pair. Like, don't just think I have the black pair or purple pair or whatever color that is. I also right, have right, the green Right, 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 like, right. Because, and yeah, because you can't wear it all one, at once, right? Yeah. So it's like, oh, I'm just going to show everything I got. I'm going to show off all as much heat as I can in one outfit. So I like when, like when people post their pictures on IG, their sneakers, and it's like, you know, they have a bunch of fives. Okay, take a picture of your fives. I don't like the pictures where it's like they're obviously at the park or on the sidewalk and they're wearing a pair of fives and they bend over and in their hand <laughs> Hold, in the, holding a pair of fives. Yeah, in the right hand they got two <laughs> pair of fives and the in the left hand they got three pair of fives and it's like hey, you know what? If you would have just you don't we would get it. <laughs> You're a sneakerhead. You don't have to show all your fives today. You could wear that today, you could wear one tomorrow. It's just corny. Like I, I like, absolutely I think I hate you know, IG pictures now. Cuz you know, you know I love my Jordan 1s. Right. Um and like when I see people doing the wheel and stuff, like it looks cool, but I don't have the time the to time. take out every single pair of my ones, to, to to take them out, take only the right foot or whatever, and then like lay them all out in a design and get it in the frame and then do the filter and put them all the way back into the box and stack them back up again. If you got the time to take out all your Katie whatever and put them in a spiral or make a K and a D. Or make a Jumpman logo. <laughs> That's your favorite one. I hate Jumpman those. Huh? Like I sometimes, no joke, <laughs> no joke, me and my uncle, we would go party and stuff. And we'd be so wasted that he used to always say this. Shout out to my Uncle Willis. He would always say, man, I wish I had a teleportation device. No joke. If I if I had the ability to teleport to somebody's house while they're laying out a Jumpman out of Jordan's, I'd literally kick through all of them. Like, I kick through all of them, <laughs> and I teleport back home. Like, I, I can't stand that. There was one guy who made the kick. Was it you that sent me the guy who made the Kyrie logo? That yep, K? Yep. Oh, my K2, goodness. K2. Like, come on, K2 man. Logo. You know somebody. Logo. You know somebody is going to make the half Kyrie and half Kobe. Half Kobe. You half know Kobe, it's yeah. coming. You know and, it's coming. And, and it's going to be on top. It's going to be on top of a picture of Bruce Lee kicking Wilt Chamberlain. <laughs> you know it. It's going to have a Bruce Lee statue. Oh, Kareem. Yeah. <laughs> Kareem. Kicking Kareem. Yeah, kicking Kareem. It's going to be and, and like some type of shoe cleaner spray. It's going to be some corny. <laughs> um, sneaker collaborations. So, obviously, oh my God. obviously oh. we had a Supreme Louis Vuitton that made a lot of noise. And uh, we have the off-white Nike that's uh, dropping any day soon. Uh, obviously, people already have their pairs. Jay, from your perspective, you see this going further. Other brands? No, oh, I think it's, I think it's starting, man. You do? Like, yeah. Like, look at. Have you? I went on. I went online to StockX just to look at how much a Supreme Louis trunk would cost, just so I could laugh a little bit. That oh. joint is like a hundred, <laughs> more than a hundred k, man. <laughs> What, like, what would you do with a Louis Vuitton Supreme skateboard case? Like, what, like, it's insane. 
It is insane. People are losing their minds over this off-white stuff. Yeah, I don't understand that. Like, they're losing their minds. And, like, you, now, uh, the you know how, like, everyone's into, like, the Gucci slides? I can see them going, doing a sneaker collab soon, right? You know what? I don't even, like, I, I mean, obviously the Gucci slides came out when Future, not, not came out, but, you know, everybody started caring right. about Gucci right. slides after the Future song. And I think I absolutely hate seeing Gucci slides now. Like, I I can't go anywhere without seeing somebody wearing Gucci slides. Like, I like them, but they're everywhere now. And I'm seeing cats wearing them. I don't know if they're fake or real, but I'm seeing cats that are wearing, like, still wearing, like, an Echo t-shirt. But they got on Gucci (laughs) flip-flops. How much are Gucci (laughs) flip-flops? I don't even know how much they cost. Uh, Like, 175 you know what? I've never, I've never. Well, see, I've never been interested in buying them, so I don't know. Me I, neither. What, I want to guess that they're above two hundred. I mean, I would think, but I think they're actually like around one seventy-five, maybe, maybe two hundred. I don't see why I wouldn't buy an entire sneaker. I mean, I know it's not a Gucci flip flop, but flip flops to me are like going to the grocery store or if I played basketball after the basketball game. Right. Right. I don't need. I have to be rich. Like I have to be certified rich in order to just wear gucci flip-flops just to wear them like i but you know what's it's crazy though is that like and this is what i was thinking is that so like the sneaker culture is moving towards high-end brand collapse and the thing is is that these kids like the kids like it went from wanting jordans which were people were already complaining about being too expensive yep to wanting like you know, to wanting like even more high end Supreme stuff when you're gonna pay like four hundred for a T shirt. Like like where does it end? You know it, what I mean? Like it's it's just getting worse. It's getting crazier. It's way and it's getting crazy and it's getting crazy quick. So over, in the wedding in the wedding over the weekend, um I was talking um to a to an old family friend and his kids are in uh middle school, high school right now. And and I was talking to him about sneakers, and he was like, "Oh, my my sons would my sons would love talking to you, like you guys could talk sneakers with them." He's like, "Yeah, they're so into like the Supreme Louis stuff," and then and then he was like, "Yeah, my son is even into like Go Yard," and like, "Oh my goodness!" And I'm like, "Go Yard!" I was like, "Go Yard!" I was like, "The the company that makes bags and trunks for like right. rich like that stuff is no joke, man. Like a bag <laughs> is like a thousand dollars. Like one of their trunks is like." 40 like 30k like that yeah like why 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 is a 12 what a 12 year old interested in that stuff like that's not i don't think that that's a good thing no it's not because like you said i mean we've talked about this i mean first 10 episodes of the podcast a year a year ago over a year ago this it's becoming sneaker culture is becoming for the elite like you're no longer it used to be dope to get the J's like, and I guess this can kind of fit into sneaker sitting. Um, and I've said this numerous times. I like to feel special when I buy right. something. And right, that's exactly right. what's happening. A lot of people are trying to figure out why are Jay's sitting? Jordan's making too many. You, you wanted Jordan to make a lot. Now he is. You wanted them to do this. Now they are. They're using better materials. You still don't want them. No, they don't make you feel special anymore. Like, you used to be able to, like, the, the whole thing that made the sneaker culture and having dope sneakers, and I don't care what anybody says. They can disagree. They can say, you're hype. They can say anything they want to say. But there was nothing better knowing that you got something that other people didn't get. And they wanted it. <laughs> that's just period. Like, that's period. If you stood in line all night and you were able to get a Becker 4, what made it even better was how many people didn't get it because they wanted it so bad. Like, when, when Twitter RSVP was out, when, like, you could reserve a pair. I remember cats will reserve a pair in Vegas from here and drive to Vegas, drive to California to do stuff. I got Yeezy 2s driving to California. Like, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, oh, you're going to put that extra effort in and to get something. Like, who would – there was no way that I was going to pass up on a pair of Yeezy 2s because I wasn't in that state. Like, right. people were pe- buying plane tickets – to go buy Yeezy 2s that they had reserved in other states. Now, 
I don't That's feel, crazy. I don't feel special wearing – like I remember when we went to get the Easy 2 and me and Georgia drove to uh, California to get it from uh, – I think it was Montalban. It's out of business. That was the Nike store. And uh, the first guy in line had bought his plane ticket. Like he flew in that day and was flying out that day. And he was in line panicking because he needed to already head to the airport. Like he had, <laughs> you know, and he was like, I think he flew in from Oregon actually, or Washington. And it was one of those things where it was like he knew he had to get that sneaker because he was gonna be in a class of sneakerheads that hasn't been touched yet. It's right. gotten to the point to where now Yeezys, they're almost becoming regular. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird, right? It is. I looked on. I was on StockX today all day looking at stuff. I never mess with StockX and Goat that much. I love the concept and ideas of them, but today was the first day I really got on there and looked at it. And I seen creams for like four forty, and creams not the most attractive, but it's still a Yeezy, you know. Mm-hmm. And I looked on eBay and I seen authentic pirate blacks sell for six eighty, and I thought that seems a little low. <laughs> That is a good price, though, because I, cause, like, I was just saying, like, the, you're talking about the 1.0s, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because like, normally those are going for like a 1000 right? at least. And and the only reason I know it's authentic is because I know the person that was selling them. Like, oh, okay. It, it wasn't just like I just eyed them. Like, I knew the person selling them, and I hit him up like, bro, he was like, I'm not wearing them. In all honesty, I'm looking at mine like, you know what? I'm not wearing them. I'd probably sell mine for 690 Like, I don't... I don't wear them anymore. Like they, the this past weekend we went to a birthday party, which was such a weird birthday party it, uh, for my son. It was like one of his, like his best friend, and they're okay. only four years old. And they said bring your swimsuit, and it was literally a backyard full of slipping slides. I thought it was gonna be a swimming pool. <laughs> it was the most mud ever. My zebras. I had to come home and oh, actually, no. yeah, oh, I, no, I no, thought no, no. you know what? Because me, I'm married. I'm married with kids. I don't go a lot of places, all right? right so when right, I do right. get out the house, I got to put on something. I wore zebras, and they were covered in mud. Like, I actually had to come home and open up a rejuvenator kit and actually clean the shoes. Like, actually scrub them. Use all three brushes and scrub them. Um, I'm sure your rejuvenator plug was happy with that. It worked. So I was glad <laughs> because there was some stuff shout, in there. Shout out to rejuvenator. Yeah, hey, I couldn't. need a overseas correspondent. Let me know. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna ask them if they do, man. They can actually you 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 do you dope. Um, they uh yeah, because some of the mud like it was like that Arizona mud, like it looked like enchilada sauce. Like <laughs> I was like, oh, I, I thought I was like, you know what? These are done, they're cooked. But I didn't necessarily care though. You know what I mean? I wasn't like, ah, it's fine. It's just shoes. Like I don't even care. Um, but yeah, like we were saying, Jordan sitting like. Does it hurt your heart to see Jordan sitting? Jordan sitting, or it's do you weird. Get it? It's it, uh, it's so weird, man. Because I remember when you you guys were talking about them sitting, and you were like, "Ah, I miss that feeling of like being able to cop." And I remember I was listening to that episode, and in my head, I was like, "I'd rather them sit and have a chance at them than not being able to get them and being salty." No, you don't. But 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 <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I realized. And 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 here's the thing. Here here's where I'm so like, like, weird about it is that, um, the ones that sit are the ones that I don't want, and the ones that I do want, I'm still not going to be able to get, even if they are a GR. Like the like even the Space Jam 11s, like the Space Jam 11s. I remember when you guys were talking about it, you were saying that they were not going to sell out. All right. And so and I was like, you know what? I looked at like the release calendar. I looked at the release spots. I looked at like the quantities. I was like, man, they are going to be everywhere. Right. And I still struck out everywhere. And you know what's funny is you can get a pair for retail <laughs> or under retail now. Like people something about the 11 still makes people lose their minds. I don't get yep. it. Like, yep. obviously we got two coming out the, at the end of this year. Like they're going to OD uh, and not the Navy blue ones. I do want the red ones. I have no desire for those red ones. I think, right. Uh, even, you, even just to, just, even just to own them, like knowing that you won't wear them. I you, thought you about it, own them? but you know, I mean, I don't got to tell you, you've been in the game for a minute. Like red, 11s have been rumored for about nine years. They well, ever since C, ever since CP wore them, like what three years ago or two years? Yeah, ago? Yeah, they are so late with a red 11. 
I lost interest. Like, once you look at so many sample pictures and so many rumor, rumor IG posts and rumor tweets and rumor face, come on. Like, I'm done with rumor soul collector posts. I'm done with it. Like, you've, but you've then, okay. So, then, so then let me ask you this might be a good question. Do you think IG and social media has like desensitized us it has. about a shoe? Because, like, if you walked into a store, let's say you walk into a store and let's say we go back in time like five years where, IG and stuff isn't that popular. And you walked into a store and you saw a Red 11 sitting on a shelf and you didn't know it was coming out. I Would mean, you buy it? Yeah, probably. Like, because it's like Yeezys and Boost. George thinks I hate Boost now. I don't hate Boost. You can never hate Boost. I'm just sick and tired of seeing it. Like, I'm. you can't go anywhere without somebody wearing a Yeezy some type of boost, NMD, Ultra Boost, period. Like you just can't go anywhere without seeing it. I go to the grocery store. All the checkout boys are wearing boost. I go to like, I go to, I went to Big O Tire. I went to Big O Tire to like get an oil, cha- oil change or something I went there for. And the guy was wearing Ultra Boost. And like everybody is wearing Ultra Boost. And then you get on IG. You get on IG and people got on Yeezy. People got on some type of booze. They got on some type of like, you know, everywhere. And it's more of like, you know what? Booze to me now, they're just regular. They're not. I'm not going out of my way to get them. I'm not doing anything extra to get them. Like to me, when it comes to buying a sneaker, the starting price is 220 Even if the retail mm-hmm. was 160 That's my starting right. price, 220 Yeah. It's yeah. like, you know what? Flyknit ones. I, I want them. Let's just say they fly in the U.S. They fly everywhere. Oh, my mind's already at two twenty. Like, oh no, no, I'm paying two twenty. Like, that's where I'm starting, and the max I'll go is two sixty five. Like, that's that's just the where we are right now. Yeah, but then like with Boost though, like if you're just talking about a regular Ultra Boost, wouldn't you say that that like it's almost? I mean, obviously not in longevity, but in people's minds, it's like an Air Force One now. Uh, where where it's more like it's more like you don't need to be elite to own it, right? You don't need to be, uh, like I mean, you no. you could be a regular person and just walk into a Foot Locker and be like, "Ooh, these are really comfortable," and you never heard of Ultra Boost before, and you can just buy one. Yeah, because but what if, what if you what if you what if the do, the dude that was doing your oil change was wearing like like a Kith a Kith NMD or like a a Copa like a Copa right. Ultra Boost? W- would you then be like, oh, "Okay, that's dope." Uh, I would more be like, well, me in my perspective doing a podcast, I'm like, oh, I got to let him know we have a sneaker podcast <laughs> because <laughs> that's in my mind. But but what you're saying is a good point. We went to Restoration Hardware. We were at the store yesterday and it was a dad. You know, he was probably in his 40s, 50s, and he was wearing Ultra Boost and it was like an uncaged boost. And I looked at him like, man, I wonder you just can never tell who's in the sneakers anymore. Like right. you just can't tell. Like I look on IG and there's people in their well in their fifties in the in the sneakers, and yep. I'm looking at him like, is he in the sneakers or did he just say wow? You know, did he look like the type of guy that walks in the Foot Locker like, uh, what do you recommend for comfort? I'm on my feet right. all day, like, you know. Yeah, because he went from he went from an Air Monarch to an Ultra Booster. Right? right. So <laughs> it, it's kind of hard to tell. So like when I see somebody wearing them, I kind of feel like somebody put them on. You know what I mean? Like somebody said, bro. You got to try Ultra Boost. Like, you need right, some comfortable. Right. You got to try this. Oh, you hike? You know, hey, if you hike, we're this type of Ultra. You know, something like that, you know. Um, but, you know, back to Jordan sitting, I don't – like, Jordan is going to have to pull out – they're going to be pulling out a lot of tricks and stuff, fly knit. They're going to be pulling out a lot of stuff. And, like, to me, the Jordan 32, I think the pictures look good, but it doesn't look good enough to me to pay 180 or 200 well, it's tough because like it just it looks even more of a performance shoe than the thirty one did. Yeah, I agree with that. So, and I remember uh, when you guys were talking about it in your last pod, like I would not wear that shoe casually because it it no. looks like it's just too much of a basketball shoe. Yeah, even the low. So tops. I mean, yeah, and and also when uh um. Was it was it Don that brought it up? Or was that like I'm surprised that they re- released the images of the low top so soon? Oh yeah, yeah, that's what I had said. I had brought up because yeah. I was usually, you know, they have out their little rollout of like the mids or high, whatever you want to call them, and then 
you'll see on like a sneaker news or so something some type of sneaker publication like the low the lows are out you know <laughs> like right they rolled it all out you know like i i don't know I what know. that's all about um, and so i actually saw images of that of the 32s and the lows maybe like um a month at, no, maybe two months ago because uh my friend works for an ad agency okay um, you know a lot and, of people and, hey man it's a it's a small world out here in in shanghai uh that's probably the most popular one of the most popular <laughs> <laughs> small world on that side uh, of the <laughs> yeah uh, no like it's a small world um, here in at phoenix okay. yeah he works for an ad agency and then uh and I, and i saw some photos and i was like oh, okay but to me, like right off the bat, I was like, "These are a performance only basketball shoe." You hoop, you hoop, right? Yeah, I hoop. I play like two times a week. Oh, okay, and see, I'm, I want to get back into hooping, but I'm nervous that I'm whack now, and I can't be whack. Uh, like once I broke, well, I mean, my, once I as broke long my as you hand, got bragging rights over Ryan and George, I think you you straight, right? Man, George ain't running. <laughs> he ain't running nowhere. Uh, Right. Is he like uh, Sam Perkins out on the three point line? He's not even that. <laughs> <laughs> like I've only I've only hooped with George twice. The one time I broke my hand, the very first play of the game. So like I had to leave. And Wait, then, did you like karate chop you or something? No, like no joke. It was the very first I dribbled the ball up the floor and I was getting ready to pass it and the guy knocked it in the air and I jumped up to grab it and he swung down with his hand. He swung down oh. at the ball. And his hand, his palm hit the tips of my fingers, and it yeah, hit, and it just like pushed it down. It right? just pushed oh, my fingers yeah. down and crushed my yeah. hand, but it didn't hurt at all. So I never saw George hoop then either. So like I left, like all my <laughs> all my fingers, all my fingers were twisted. Like so I was like I thought they were dislocated, and basically one of the homies was like, "Yeah, you need an X ray." So I left. Um, but yeah, no Jordans. I I don't feel it's bad hard, man. for them. Like, it, it's hard to say because. Okay, so let me ask you this. If, because I think about this stuff all the time, because when I take photos on my IG account, every time I'm in like a sneaker store, I'll, ta- I'll try to take a photo because I know people in the States are always curious about what's going on over here. Right. And then, um, like, and, and, and classic sitters, right? Like, what sits out here sits over there. Um, the pictures that you I know, send, I know, that's a lot of stuff that sits. There's a lot, man, because because I I remember when I was on your pod before, I talked about it. People out here, they only care about the OGs, man. They they only care about the classic OG colorways that MJ wore before. Yeah, because cement threes are gonna come out. Those are gonna fly. They're gonna those, they're gonna fly. But well, uh, okay, they're gonna fly out here. They're gonna raffle those joints for sure, and I have. So you won't be able to find them. Of course, and I just feel like uh, True Blues should have. Like, <laughs> why didn't True Blues? I don't get it. Like, everybody wants the Nike on the back. They give us the Nike on the back, and they give us the OG. I, I, I don't know what people want. Sneakerheads are the most fickle people ever. Like, like I know, you right? said, we talked about the metallic fives, right? You always talk about the metallic fives. They're so oh, underrated. I know, so underrated. <laughs> and I, so underrated. And I think people on IG, like you said, I think IG desensitizes desensitizes us to a lot of releases because you see a lot of people that get them early. You see, a, you just see them over and over and over and over again. Right. I've talked right. to so many people that message. You know, people message me all the time on IG, and they're like, you know, what do you think about these? And I said, hey man, don't buy eggplant foams the first day. Like, don't do it, bro. Right. I need them, bro. I need them. I said, hey man. <laughs> I said they're not gonna fly. He said, you don't think they'll sell out? You don't think they'll sell out? And I said, come on. Obviously, they didn't listen. He bought two pairs. He said, I couldn't wait. I said, okay, man. <laughs> like, like, people, there are still certain things. Like 13s. Brett 13s is a classic oh, Jordan. Man. And I oh, might I, I might put it in the top five Jordans. Maybe. Top six, maybe. And there were people who obviously went out immediately and copped. But I think a lot of people on Instagram that go out and immediately and buy a lot of this stuff feel like they have to. Like they have to have something new because they've built up this persona on social media that they have everything so if they don't have it they feel like oh crap like i gotta cop these you know 
Right. I right. got a cop to post on the Instagram. I got a cop to show what I'm rocking today. I wait till yeah. the 32s drop. They're gonna be. I I could name the people on IG who are gonna post 32s. I'm not going to, <laughs> but I already see the pictures. I already see the pictures. I could see somebody posting a picture with the 32 with the 31 in the background. And like I can already see it, you know. But okay, so so here's here's a hypothetical question: How would how would Jordan Brand do if they only so they only sold ones, elevens, like classics with the Nike Air on the back, and they didn't give us like these fire reds, these Take Flight Thirteens? It's too late. Like it's too late to give us this stuff, like. I think I used to think like it used to be a, a strategy. I could tell it was a strategy. When they gave us in 2014 infrared sixes, the infrared was off. There was no Nike in the back. You said to yourself, all right, they're going to release the original ones in a few years. They haven't. If I think if infrared sixes came out with the Nike in the back and all that, they'd sit like there are certain models. I think 11s. I'm sorry. Like, I'm going to say it again. I think these 11s will sit <laughs> this time. At some point, 11s have to sit. They have to. They're not that wearable. Yeah. They're they're kind of tacky now. Like Yeah, cuz I mean they're they're like tugboats on your feet now. Yeah, they are and I don't see any of these kids like it's really you'd be hard pressed to find these kids that go in their closet and say, "Should I wear this 11 or should I wear this you know, Y3 boost, you know. Um, but like you said, too, going back to your uh, the guy you were talking to at the wedding. Sorry. You said that his son was into the go yard. <laughs> like, yeah. He, he's like, he, he was like, I'm in. He's like, yeah, my son's into go yard now. Dude, that's insane. And I was like, and I was like, he's 12 years old. Like my wife, it like lo- loves go yard, but she isn't even like she doesn't think about it like that. You right. know what I mean? Like. It's it's come insane. on. Let's, let's be let's be real now. This kid is what twelve years old is what like seventh grade, and you you're know into why go, you're into go yard go yard stuff. Like what is that all about? It's funny because I remember these kids growing up in our era. People were worried about the influence of others with violence, drugs, things like that. I think drugs is still an influence thing. People in music and stuff like that, but the high end fashion and the like those shoulder bags all that stuff that comes straight from like hip-hop that comes from like because there is no reason why a 12 year old should even know what goyard goyard is like that's what i'm saying when when he said when he said when he said he was like my my son is into goyard i was like i looked at him i like had to blink i was like what what like you talking go yard, go yard, like yeah. the bags go yard. You used to be able to buy your kid Jordans, and he'd be fresh at school. Like he's not going to be fresh anymore with Jordans at school. He's got to no, have. No, that's not. That's not enough. That's what I'm saying. Like, he's got to have Supreme. Like he has to have Supreme he to, Louis. He like, has to have Supreme. Um, he has to have Supreme. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm just kind of. I'm kind of over. Over it. I'm over like. Uh, I, I think but, okay. So in, I think in I'm May, over. I think May. I'm over real quick. I think I'm over how into how into stuff that everybody else is i don't know if that makes sense like i hate seeing people so in the supreme louis vuitton like it's okay to like it but these people are like where every time i see khaled he's got on something like it's just they they destroy it like and Rich people are probably like, this used to be ours. Like, the, like, <laughs> the elitists are like, why is that kid wearing Louis? You know? Well, I mean, you're probably going to see a lot more people wearing it, not just because of IG, but you're going to see more people wearing it because you got people wanting to knock it off. No one's going to knock off a 13 take flight. No. But you're going to see thousands of knockoff Gucci slides. You're gonna see thousands of off-white, like off-white clothing and like bape stuff. You know, like that's just. You might actually see more of it because you more do. people are buying the fake stuff. I think people. I think a lot of the those companies that make the replicas or fakes or whatever. I think they've kind of gotten away from the Jordans. They've like. Oh, they, because it's not making them any money anymore. It's not. Like it's just if you're not making something with boosts. 
a Yeezy or anything high end is crazy. I remember replica sites used to just have SpongeBob Dub Zeros, and and, <laughs> and like I remember like Tom and Jerry Jordan Thirteens. That was oh such a God. weird period. What was oh that all God. about? Like, oh my why God. did those replica companies do that? I, I no one has anybody ever asked what was. Why do they use SpongeBob and stuff like that? I never understood. I mean, that. Ma- I mean, maybe they were just hoping a rapper would rock it in their music video, and then off they go, man. That was a that was a crazy period of time. Now you go on. You know, what's funny is like you know I always like go to I don't know what that I go look on the site to see what the fakes look like and stuff like that. Right, and then right, the right. One right. post where it does fake education, whatever that is. Yeah, I yeah, look yeah. and I look and I'm like, man, these joints are looking good and good. But when I go take a look at that stuff, there's always that Louis Vuitton section, that Gucci section. Yep. And they got the backpacks and everything. And I'm yep. not. I hey man, I Gucci. I mean Gucci, Burberry, all that stuff. Been there, done that at some point. But I couldn't tell somebody if they had a fake Gucci backpack or. I oh, could. I know. I wouldn't be able to tell, so I don't know. Man. I know. Well, okay, but then okay. So I mean, one last thing, real quick. Yeah. The the Jordan one, the shadows. They're they're supposed to drop next year. I hate them. I love them. Right? I hate them at the same time. They're gonna. They're gonna sell out. Yeah, of course. Like uh... they're gonna sell out. You don't think so? No, the shadows. Come on. I they're, guess so. Yeah. You know, even if even if. The quantity is as big as the breads or the space jams. They're going to sell out. Yeah, they will. I, I look at shadows as kind of like they might be overrated. I used to it's, love it's, shadows. It's weird, it's weird how a gray and black pair is such a huge hit among Jordan fans. Yeah. Like, I think that's what it kind of came down to. Like, I never wear the, well, the ones I wore, I just sold them to Ryan. And then I bought like the low top version. I've never worn them one time ever, and it's just not—it's not a go-to to me for Jordans. Like even though I'd rock a shattered backboard or reverse shattered backboard in a hot second, but I don't know, man. I—I I don't know what I want anymore. I don't know what sneakerheads want. It's just I don't think sneakerheads need opinions anymore. I think we just—it's too much for me, man. Like, so. I just don't know what what took it down its path. Like, why is it where it is now? Is it because of social media? Is it because of Instagram and Facebook? Everything. And- it's everything. Like, uh, the people that could afford to go on StockX and pay $100,000 for a Supreme Louis Vuitton trunk, they don't go on StockX. <laughs> like, they don't, right. they don't yeah, download exactly. an app called StockX to go get their Supreme trunks. <laughs> like, if I have that type of money to get something like that i don't go i don't have to go on StockX and see what the the current offer is like market that's, yeah what the current what the market, market is on it that's stuff. stupid like if i'm that rich somebody at suprema louis vuitton is holding me down like um you want to do top 10 point guards yeah let's do it are you good on time yeah i got about 20 minutes oh 20 minutes jeez that's yeah. short all right you uh i'll go first you got honorable mentions or no uh yeah what do you got? Uh, you no, you go first. Uh, honorable mentions. I got Scott Skiles. I thought Scott Skiles was a good point guard. I okay. don't like him, but I thought he was a decent <laughs> point guard. Uh, I got Avery when Johnson. Was the last time? When was the last time he was coaching? Uh, he was coaching the Bucks. I think the last spot. I think uh, he had coached the Suns for a little bit. And uh, he was a bad coach, though, man. I think he was just hard. I don't know if he was a bad yeah, no coach. One, yeah. Oh, he oh he coached the Magic for a while too, right? I think he like, like went back to the Magic. Like he was yeah, coaching yeah, the yeah, Magic, yeah. got fired, went back to the Magic. I yep. think he coached the Suns. Uh, he coached the Bucks. I'm sorry, he coached Suns, uh, Bulls, Bucks, and Magic. He coached Magic in 2016. Yep, I oh. remember because Alfred Payton was ah, player, and, that's right, and he, and he hated playing for him. I like Alfred Payton. He's pretty good. He's not bad. His hair is wild, but he's good. Uh, I got. How do you, how, how, yeah, how do you play basketball looking like the weekend? I don't get that, no, because <laughs> if he cut that off, he would be so much lighter. I bet his neck is killing him. All right? <laughs> Dreadlocks are heavy. Uh, I got uh, Terry. Uh, Terry, I'm sorry. I got not. I would say Terry Cummings. I got. Uh, I got Iverson honorable mention. 
I Dang. Was, honorable mention? One of my favorite players of all time. Maybe my second favorite player of all time. But he wasn't a good point guard. Like, he was a good. Okay, bet. Yeah. I, he was okay. a good basketball right. player. I'll, you I'll agree with you there. I'll agree with and you. And then I got Tim Hardaway. I, you know, I was in the Bay Area. I loved Tim Hardaway. Uh, I didn't really care for him on the Heat. I kind of feel like yep. he, I don't know. His style of play is unique. But uh, those are my honorable mentions. Oh, I got, I'm sorry. I got uh, uh, Mahmoud Abdul Rauf as well. Okay, bet. Love Chris him. Jackson. Yep. Nice. Nice. Uh, did you want to do your honorable mentions first before I do my 10? My yeah, I'll do 10? my honorable mention. Okay. Uh, I got Andre Miller. Oh, I'm sorry. Back to, I'm sorry. Top 10 point guards to us. Jay Schwang is in the building. He's not really in the building. You but. always butcher. You always butcher my Schwang? name. Schwang? No, man. Schwang. Schwang. Jay Schwang is not in the building, but he's on the podcast. I'm gonna get that right one day. I was like, I was you, driving. Yo, bro, bro. After listening to you guys for so long, you are terrible. I'm awful names. at names. You All of are them. awful. I only know people by sneakers. I don't know names at work. They'll say, "Oh, Jake said this." I'm like, "What was he wearing? New balances?" I have no idea who Jake is. Like, I have no idea who anybody is. Like, this is no lie. This you, is everybody. you know him, the, the 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 dude in the Air Monarchs. Oh, oh, oh. Um, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, yeah. And I'll be like, well, there's like three monarchs in the room. Like, <laughs> um, so what'd you say? I'm sorry. I said Andre Miller. Andre he Miller. Is so, he's so underrated. He really is. He, uh, not under. He's disrespected. Disrespected. He spent, he spent all those years on those bummy teams in Cleveland. Traded over and over and over. But he was leading the league in assists. Yeah. Andre like, Miller is very disrespected. He, had, he was like with the original post-up. You know, can really post up. You know. Yep. Uh, I have Muggsy Bogues. Yeah. I mean, me just, just the same because, height. just because of man, like, because I love that Hornets team. Oh and, yeah. And he gave, and he gave all short people. He like, did. He that, made, that feeling of man, he made I can do me that feel too. Good. When he rejected Patrick Ewing, oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> yeah, no, Muggsy Bogues always made me feel good. Larry Johnson is my favorite player of all time, but uh, yep, Muggsy Bogues yep. was like, man, you know. Um, I got uh, Sam Cassell. Okay, that's a good one. I have Sam Cassell, but I actually my favorite Sam Cassell is not the Bucks Sam Cassell. I love Sam Cassell right. when he was l- later in his career when he was playing with KG and Spree. Oh, because because he he was the he was the leader. Like KG was the man right. on that team, but like in the clutch, man, like from that elbow, Cassell. He was money. I he think, was so money there. I think that's when he became a really, really real point guard on that team. When he was right. on the Rockets, he came off the bench and, like, you know, he yep. would get one of those threes and talk a little junk. Yep. He wasn't like yep. – Kenny Smith was their point guard. Yep. Uh, but that's a good one. And Vernon Maxwell. That's a good one. Yep. And then uh, my last honorable mention is Jason Williams, White Chocolate, just because of what – not because of the – not because of what <laughs> – him leading a team, right? Because I mean, clearly Bibby was the better, better point oh, guard of for course. those Kings teams. But man, he was so much fun to watch. Gosh, I mean, you tuned in. Like, think back. We were tuning in the Kings games. <laughs> like, it was I like know. it was like, oh crap, Kings are playing tonight. Yeah, you had to watch. Like, Kings came on prime time. Mavs. They're a they're a joke now. Like yeah. they are the biggest joke, a disaster, ever. and they got a new stadium. Like it's a disaster out there. Uh, I do feel like they do got the rookie of the year, though. Um, I do, I do, I do like De'Aaron Fox. I'm a huge I De'Aaron Fox him. fan. I'm a huge De'Aaron Fox fan. Number ten, top ten point guards to us. I got Isaiah Thomas, number ten. I think, obviously, he's great. But I've never really been an Isaiah Thomas fan. He's always kind of weird. And I do remember watching him growing up. But, like, he was already on his way out kind of when I was watching. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But I did like his game. Uh, number nine, I got Mark Price. I like Mark Dang. Price. Um, Mark Price, he, he he played his role. Like He could shoot from anywhere. And he was a good yep. point guard. Uh, number eight, I got Nick Van Exel. I think Nick Van Axel is very underrated. He uh, is so – he's not on my list too, but he is so – I have a I, ha, I have a bunch of Nick Van Axel jerseys. Yeah. He is so uh, – he is so underrated. So he underrated. So, just because his his attitude killed him. It that's, did. That's what, that's what killed him. Like his attitude, his attitude was like 
his attitude was he was better than what he was and it killed him like he was really really good but he thought he was great like yep. you know and it was like bro nobody was trying to hear that back then especially on those teams when the Lakers were going downhill and then he went to like the Mavericks at one point like he just his attitude killed him uh number 7 I got Kenny Anderson okay New Jersey Nets he was great man college yep. oh my goodness like he's an actual legend you know as far as basketball not NBA but just pure basketball but another one of those like couldn't get out of their way drinking and partying he just couldn't get out of his way i feel like there's a lot of point guards back in the 90s that that all kind of had issues like that man yeah like it was rod strickland right rod oh strickland. you jumping the gun that's one of my guys <laughs> love rod strickland uh, yep uh so that was my bottom 10 what do you got uh did you go up to five already i went up to seven. One, ten, nine, one, two. Oh, you know what? I got one more. Sorry. Number six, Gary Payton. Now, I would have put Gary Payton a little bit higher because he's one of my favorite players, but he couldn't score easy. He he wasn't a – he was never really great at one particular thing except defense. Like, right. I wouldn't say Gary Payton was a great passer. I, I think he was a good leader, but I think he was so cocky that, like, he got in the way of himself too sometimes – yeah, like yeah. you could easily see a game become all about Gary Payton, like all about him, and he have like eight points, three assists, and you would think Gary Payton ended the game with like forty and ten, you know. <laughs> Near the uh, when he was still in Seattle before he got traded, he was putting up like twenty five. Yeah, he had some good years. Man. Yeah, he had some good years. Where did he, he go? Years, just but... was he just there, Miami and Lakers? Well, he's coaching big three now. You're right, 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 right. right. Uh, <laughs> Who yeah, isn't in Big Three? He was, uh, he was on Miami last. Oh, uh, Miami was last. I thought the Lakers was last. No, because he won a championship with Miami. Yeah, but I thought he went from Miami to the Lakers when Karl Malone went there. That was before Miami. Really? Yeah. Okay. That Lakers team, that uh, Malone team, with when they had like that super team with Malone and Peyton, Kobe. Jack and Kobe. That was before. That was before Miami. Oh, okay. Maybe you're right. I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what you got? That was my bottom. All right, number 10, and I know I'm going to get a lot of crap for this, but uh, I went with Penny just because hmm. I, know he, I, know he, I know he changed the game and everything, and he was so much fun to watch, but it was too short, man. It was, like, man. I don't even know if he get a lot of crap. He's not on my list. Like, yeah. It was like, way too I, so disappointing. Yeah, it was too short. But, I mean, when he, when he was you know, on, man, he was, he was yeah. insane. He yeah. was good. Uh, number nine, I got Russell Westbrook. Really? Uh, yeah, I just think that. I mean, what what other point guard do you see that can do what he does, man? This man yeah. had forty, what forty one triple doubles or something like that. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, I think right? like I think I need one more season. Actually, I don't know. He's definitely the most athletic player in NBA history. Like, I mean, he's pretty insane, and and all the greats look at him and are like. Like, yeah, and MJ MJ praises him, right? And then Kobe loves him. Kobe's and, like he's the next he's the next me. And he doesn't get hurt. And he doesn't get hurt. Doesn't get which hurt, which is insane. He only got hurt that insane. one time with pa- Patrick Beverly. <laughs> when Patrick Beverly took that cheap shot, nonsense. <laughs> uh, that's the only time he ever's been hurt. So yeah, I got a, uh, I got a uh, Russell at number nine. Uh, number eight, I got a uh, Nash. And I know if Ryan's Ooh. up there. I don't know. Probably. That's a good one. Cuz cuz I think Nash Nash had a weird career, man. He had to play behind he play, he played behind Kevin Johnson and Jason Kidd. Yeah. That's a good one. And and when he was in Dallas, he wasn't even unleashed of his full potential. And that was until he got traded to Phoenix when he was already like 30. Yeah. Like I'm, who like whoever got better at the end of their career like that. Yeah, once his – yeah, he he flourished. I mean, he came to the Suns at the perfect time. Yo, and a lot of people say that, like, Nash is, like, the older version of Curry in, in his shooting. Like, yeah. Because he – I remember I went to a Wizards game back when, like, it was Gilbert Arenas and them, when Nash was still with the Suns. And I went early, and I watched Nash shoot pregame. 
no joke, this man made like 30, like off, like off moving three pointers in a row, just splash. Like it wouldn't That's crazy. hit any rim. It was insane. I think he could have been a really good, like scored a lot more points if he didn't focus on, like he was a real true point guard. That's a really good pick. I'm a little mad. I don't have that on my list. That's a good pick. Yeah. I mean, two time, two time, right? Like you can't go wrong. Two time MVP. You can't yeah. go wrong with him there yeah and then what was that seven yep i think yeah and then uh six i got uh cp oh really? what uh yeah because you know what okay uh not this is to I'm us not going off of st- yeah i'm not going off of stats because stats wise he's got to be up there as one of the greatest but i just feel like oh, yeah. people don't like playing with him i don't know why <laughs> like i like he's like everywhere he's gone he's rubbed people the wrong way Right. Like, yeah. And I don't understand why or how. I mean, he obviously has this will to win. I don't right. know what his personality is like. Uh, it, to me, his personality is all I could think of is State Farm and <laughs> whatever else. So when I think of Chris that Paul. That is a bad legacy to leave behind. Yeah. When I think of, so when I think of Chris Paul, I'm thinking like, ah, he's corny. Like, that's oh all I God. think of. So. Yeah, I don't know. He's a great point guard. I mean, he's one of the top. He's a great point guard. Don't, yeah, don't get yeah. me wrong. He's one of the he's, best in history. I mean, he's got to be like top 10 most efficient in league history, I think. I mean, he has to yes. be. Uh, yep. So that was all yours, the bottom five? I feel like you're yep. missing one. What was your 10? 10 again? Uh, 10 was Penny. 9 was Westbrook. Uh, 8 was Nash. Okay. Seven. Oh wait, uh, seven was CP. Oh, maybe I, I got one more. Oh, yeah, one more. Yeah, uh, one more. Uh, and my next one is Peyton. Oh, okay, so we got pay. We both got Peyton yeah. at six. Yep, All Gary right, Peyton. Cool. Just because, man, he yeah, his defense and just the way he played, right? That swagger. Yeah, he. Uh, I mean, he's probably one of the top five trash talkers, and he's just cool. Oh, like, gotta be. <laughs> he's just cool. Be. Uh, I mean, I watch him coach. Like, I watch him coach Big Three, and it's funny because he's just talking trash to everybody. It's hilarious. I love Big Three. You like Big Three? You know that? You know they're talking about adding that into like NBA Two K now. They're gonna add it like next year. They actually should. I like it. I'm I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, it's entertaining. I was having this. I was having this conversation with a friend. You know why the Big Three is gonna stick around? Because every year they're gonna get new players. That's true. Like you could look right? at some like, of the players, you could look at some of the players and tell like the ones who won't be back next year. Like it's yeah. hilarious because if you if you retire from the NBA, you are a rookie in the big three. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> that's crazy. I will. Me and George were watching one at this bar, and uh, Kendall Gill was out there. Bruh. Oh my god! Kendall Gill is so old. All right, yo, like he, yo, but he's got a sick sneaker game though, or shoe game, not sneakers. He's he like does? he's got like alligator. Yo, he's got like alligator. Oh, shoes. You meant he's got, you know, like sh- like just shoes in general. He's got like over a thousand pairs or something. I heard. Oh, he must be on his player. So you had Gary Payne at six. All right, so let me go to number five. Yep. Number yep. five might be a little bit of a shocker because he couldn't score really, but I got Mark Jackson. Uh, okay. I thought he was a really good point guard. He stuck to his guns. I mean, he did what he was supposed to do. He didn't go too far one way. He didn't go, you know, I thought he was good on those Pacer teams. Those Rick Smiths, Reggie Miller. I yep. thought he was good on those teams, you know. So I got Mark Jackson. He was obviously decent in uh, New York and everything like that. So I think he got a yep. bad rap, though, you know, being fired as the Warriors coach and nobody picking him up again. I don't understand Yeah. That. Like, yeah. I, I get it. Not, I don't get it, but, you know, from the stuff I've heard about him, I can see why. But, come on, a good coach is a good coach. Uh, yep. Number four, I got Rod Strickland. I love Rod yep. Strickland. Okay. Rod Strickland, he had the taped wrist when he was on the Blazers. He was on the Bullets. Oh, my goodness. Rod Strickland is so underrated. All right. His Fire. handles? His handles? Come on, man. Get to the hole whenever he felt like it. Stop on a dime. But he was another point guard. Another point guard that couldn't shoot though. He couldn't. He had an ugly shot too. Yeah, it was a weird set shot. Yeah. Uh, number three, I got Jason Kidd. Uh, nice. I wanted him to put him at number one, but 
I think I'd be very disrespectful to uh, somebody else. Uh, actually, the two top two I have, I'd be very disrespectful. Number two, I got John Stockton. Uh, yep. And I feel like I should have Nash on my list if I'm going to have John Stockton. Because I think, I think John Stockton just kind of drew a bad deal man like yeah he's kind of you know what is weird because he's the number one leader in assists and yet he's still underrated he is when you think a point nobody talks about john stockton being nope. like at all he was in utah no champion went about his business he just went about his business man yeah like, i mean even malone you don't really you know i think malone is still a top three power forward or ever maybe yep i think yep. tim i think tim dunk is number one um, you can probably throw in somebody that we weren't even alive yet. You know, I don't know, you know, who, um, uh, James Worthy or somebody, or was he small for it? I don't know. Um, and number one, I got Magic Johnson. Yeah. Uh, he couldn't shoot, but you know, he could give you a solid 20 and something, but he was showtime. I was from LA, you know, growing up in that era was, you couldn't go down the street without seeing Laker stuff. Like, I mean, on the street lamps, on the billboards, jerseys, you know, stuff being sold on the corner. It was Laker town. Like, yep. they were the celebrities. The celebrities went and saw them. Like, they were the real stars, you know. So yep. uh, that's my top. You know, I, I think it'd be hard-pressed to not have Magic Johnson in your top two, top three. Um, but, yeah, so that's my that's my list. All right. I'm going to have to go quick because I got about five, like less than five minutes. All right. Go so ahead. I'm going to go quick real quick. All right. So the number five, I got Stockton. Yeah. Super underrated. Played great defense. He was a huge trash talker, too. I don't know if people knew that. He was. Yeah. Uh, and he could shoot. Um, and then number four, I got uh, – I know this is going to upset people, but uh, I got uh, Curry just because I think of what of what his legacy is going to be. Over the next couple of years, I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna change the game, man. Or if he hasn't already, he's changing the game. He already changed the game, basketball. Yeah, he's already changed the game. Like it's just the way he shoots, the way he plays. It's that's all kids want to do now. Nobody wants to dunk anymore. It's it's insane. It's insane what he does. Yep. Uh, Number three, I got Nick Van Exel. Um, Nice. Like, just I love that man. (laughs) Like I said, I got turned on to him when. When he was playing with the Lakers and he roasted Gary Payton in the playoffs. I mean, he was just destroying him. Yeah. And just that cockiness, man, with that lefty shot. And those years in Dallas, he was amazing. He was good. He was amazing. Yeah, he was. Um, and then I got uh, number two, uh, I got Magic. Number two, Magic? Just yeah, just yeah. because he he changed the uh, he changed the way you know six nine point guard. I mean, outside of LeBron, I don't think you're ever going to see that again. Oh, of course. And then number one, I got kid, just because this man this man went from not being able to shoot, like you know, just the way he played, played defense, right? Uh, especially when he went Justin Bieber and dyed his hair. <laughs> <laughs> that was a weird stage in his life. Uh, that's that was, was weird. Oh, well, yeah, that's when he was getting his divorce and everything. Right? Yeah, he so, had problems with the wife and stuff. Uh, yeah, so, he, so he went into like this weird. Uh, he went into this weird phase. But <laughs> man, I, he was he was the he was the homie man. He he could play defense, rebound. I loved it when he would grab a rebound and then push it on the break. Oh that yeah, that was that was awesome. I love that. Uh, did you have John Stockton on your list? Yeah, he was fine. Oh, okay. I was gonna say. Uh, okay. I went. I went. I went. Uh, Stockton, Curry, uh, right. Van Exel, uh, Magic, and then Kid. Curry's a little high, but I get it. All yep. right. Uh, I can already hear things getting started up for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, we appreciate you coming on today, man. I, I thank you for coming on, man. I, I'm sorry, you know, everybody wasn't able to be on with you, but uh, you know, like like I said, man, you family. So you know, we got to do this more often. Yeah, I mean, anytime, man. I mean, ever since I went to SneakerCon, I hit you up and I was like, yo, we got to talk about what, what went down there. And uh, I appreciate you having me on. I think I'm one of like the most appeared guests now. So I got that, got I that think honor. So I think you and Don might be tied. Uh, <laughs> I might be tied. Anyways, uh, appreciate Jay coming on. Thanks. All right, later.